before season three begins, before we start season three, we gotta watch the season two epilogue of Alba Josai. Oh, time to cry into our food. Time to cry into our ramen and gyoza. <laughs> They're a lot more lively after their loss than Karasuna was. Well, only one person cried into their food. Yeah, yeah, that's what it's really gonna set in. Now they have the benefit of being with each other. They're all great. Yeah. It was a loss, but not a failure. <laughs> I don't know, I think they're processing this in a way that is healthy and is very appropriate for them. Yeah, it stings. It doesn't in any way feel like they're defeated. It just feels like they're processing it and they're going to put it back into effort. I think sometimes losing by a very small margin has an extra sting than just being totally obliterated, especially if you feel like you were giving it your all. But it just depends on how you look at it. I feel like the way they're processing this, they're going to end up channeling this into practice and it's going to be a productive thing for them. But at the same time, they're so close. It was such a close game. They aren't far off from the, the greatness championships they're seeking. Maybe because a lot of them are third years, maybe not in high school, but it's not the end of their journey, I don't think. Yeah, in practice. Here's a parallel with the Karasuno team. Oh, this is kind of sad though. This is their last time playing together, maybe. <laughs> we all see where this is going. Now he's got something to say. <laughs> oh, they were fighting it back. They were holding the same this whole day. Getting out the energy through volleyball. It had to come though. It had to happen. That's a really sweet way to end it too. There's no running from the pain, but it ends up being really beautiful. Is it a curse? I think it's an asset. Doesn't feel like an insult to me. Oh, that's right. Man, I could watch IQ for all of their full careers. This is more than just the end of their high school volleyball careers. It's the end of their, like, time together in such proximity. Thank you for that duck. Cute that he ba baits with ducks. He's going to be a force to watch out for in the future. He's dangerous. That was beautiful. It was probably for time constraints, but that really would have worked so beautifully at the end of season two. Imagine missing that scene. Thank you to everyone who reminded me to watch it or, or informed me of its existence. It manages to be both heartbreaking and really inspiring at the same time. The heartbreak comes from the fact that they put so much into it and they wanted a victory and they lost at the most superficial level. More so the fact that it's the end of their high school career. It's the end of an era and it's one that they'll never get back. And the thing about these periods in life is that maybe you're aware on some level how great they are when you have them, but that gets bogged down a little bit by the, the daily grind, the difficulties, just the realities of life. But that and there's something about things coming to an end where you can look back and see it as a whole and the momentousness of it hits you all at once and you realize that it's over. I've had so many transitions in my life. I'm intimately familiar with this feeling, but as sad as these goodbyes are, there's something really special about being able to close out and reflect on chapters and the meaning they had. And the good news is you, you carry them with you for the rest of your life into your next endeavors and you can't see the future. You don't know what it's going to bring. It's harder to imagine in its full glory, having it again, as opposed to the thing that you knew very well and have already experienced. But surely, assuming you keep going forth with the same energy and the same openness and the same heart, they will come again and they will be supported by the things that came before and the people that came before. So for me, it's largely a feeling of hope and optimism for the Alba Josai team, especially Oikawa as, you know, it's so apparent that this is really the start of his journey or it's near the beginning in the grand scope of things. Their goodbye at the end of that skit. It's especially hard for me because while for me, it wasn't sports that did it, I had very, very close friends in my adolescence and early adulthood that still feel as though they're part of my core. But I don't know for a fact or I have no guarantee that we'll ever all be in the same place again with that kind of proximity, with that kind of personal closeness, with that kind of shared vision, if that makes sense. I'm hoping, and one of my dreams that keeps me going is to reform that in, in some way or in any way that I can, just at a different stage of life. <laughs> 
But whether or not that happens, my predominant feeling, besides just, you know, a general sense of longing, is just gratitude. And it's always a part of me. It's always going to be a part of me. It informs everything I do. I mean, even my successes, I feel like, are shared. Their successes, I feel like, are shared, even though we're at a distance. These kind of bonds don't break, even if they shift to not being the, the focal point as you move on with your life and your career or whatever it is. And with that being said, time to go back to the winners. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to a winning team. We're still in the tournament, which is kind of crazy. We get to have our cake and eat it too. Thank you, Season 3, Episode 1. Another early morning bike ride. When does this kid sleep? I'm sure a lot of them had a sleepless night. Going back to this. I wonder if we'll ever reach the other side. It's cliche, but I feel like this might be one of those... It's the journey, not the destination things. Just like in the end of season two thing we just watched. He might be on an endless quest. I mean, a victory would do that in some sense. But bigger picture, I mean, it's it's never ending. The victory would just be a moment of glory. Not to take anything away from a championship. Or wanting to, or me wanting them to win a championship. Just there's multiple ways to look at it. Oh, a new opening. Hell yeah. Are we doing refreshing hill sprints in the Himalayas this time? The summit. And the Eagles, that was an interesting transition. They are the mountain. Carson High School versus Sh Shira sorry, Shira Torizawa Academy. So I guess this is it. I guess this this season is this game. That's crazy. Exciting. Can't wait to learn more about the, I forgot his name again. The ace of that team. Really feels like we're coming in as the underdogs, but I still have hope. I still believe. It's possible. Just wonder what it'll take. <laughs> that shot. I like all these transitions to and from birds. And the third year's last, well. No, if they win this game, they continue, right? Episode 1, Greetings. Give me as many Daichi in third year games as I can, as you can, please. His face is still messed up. There we go, there we go. Yeah, it's, that's, it's about time. Where's the rest of the school? It's not like I like you, but I also, I like you a lot. <laughs> this girl's over it. Gee, I wonder if she likes him. I mean, who can blame her? Oh, visual visualization. Visualize that, Tanaka. Visualize your dating life after a victory. There it is. This is the proper visualization technique. <laughs> that pose. Don't interrupt our fantasy. Oh, this is part of the fantasy. <laughs> In reality, they just walk right by. I like it. We've got our goals and motivations completely in alignment. Yes, I knew that all along. God, season one feels like so long ago. Oh yeah. Did they, they grew up, right? Like they physically aged since then? Oh, you gotta watch the last couple seasons. <laughs> wow, really jumping to conclusions there. What is he gambling on the game? Oh, maybe he's a scout. Maybe he's a scout. College scout? Or just a guy with too much time on his hands. I feel like this is a misdirect. He might end up being someone that is great and that they need. Or just a jerk. We'll find out. Oh, this familiar feeling arising within me. The regret of missing this chapter of my life. <laughs> oh well, what was I doing in high school that was so important? It wasn't classes. Nah, he's front running a little bit, but it's cool. At least we have support. Maybe they can get a oh going for serves. <laughs> no, no, they're falling apart. It's fine. They'll be good when it starts. He's panicking too. Someone needs to be the emotional anchor here. I'm looking at you, Daichi. Oh, is that Suki's brother? Yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. But I understand his secrecy. Whoops. Whoops. Yeah, they have a lot of experience coming to finals games. This is the real battle. Cheer squad versus cheer squad. Damn, they were a whole taiko drum and everything. <laughs> Shake it off. It's a little bit disrespectful. 
Yeah, but I think there's a positive way to look at this. Not to take anything away from Shira Torizawa. They're very talented. They probably work extremely hard. Their success has given them a lot of gifts. Gifts that Kurosano did not have. I mean, they had no support. Nobody was coming to games. Nobody was looking at them. People were making fun of them, calling them fallen crows. Yet they still made it to this point, just like Shira Torizawa. They're playing on the same court in the same game. I think you can take some pride in that and your grit. To all the non-believers, show them what you can do. There's something exhilarating about like thinking about people who counted you out. In fact, maybe it's not the, the purest of motivations, but man, is there something powerful about like that feeling of I'll show them. I'll show everyone who didn't believe in what I could do. Those same people ask you, why are you wasting your time with something? Why do you even bother? Why don't you do something else? Are the same people who end up asking you for advice when you get to a certain level of success? <laughs> That's an interesting way to approach this conversation. So what, they're like a hammer? They're just really, really, really efficient at a few things. They're streamlined. I guess doing a few things perfectly. But maybe that means if you can put them off balance, that gives you a single point of attack too, or a single point of focus. Right, they're all supposed to be great, right? I mean, it seems like they're, they deliberately assembled the team that way. They're going for the ultimate ringer team. It's gotta be a crack though. Oh. I guess the question is, do they have enough time to figure it out during the game? <laughs> Just grilling them. Yeah, there's a plan, right? We're going in with a plan. Yeah, like a, like is often the case in these situations, being the underdog might help them. Low expectations. They're starting to give the human look of these characters, and I don't want it right now. Don't need it. Until later. <laughs> That's some real confidence right there. He's just unfazed. He doesn't, doesn't give a crap. Wow, we're getting into this so quickly, unlike any of the other seasons before this. Just right into battle. No training camp this time. No refreshing hill sprints. Yeah, why not us? Why not us? Why not win? Already their tone has completely changed from the nervous jitters of before. I feel like a big determiner of their success is how quickly they can get going, get into the rhythm. <laughs> That's what I said. Looks 25. And this time they can't show Oikawa on TV during our spotlight time. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Secret MVP over here. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Future ace. Hell yeah. Very lackluster high fives, but alright. <laughs> Hell yeah. He who puts his whole body on the line. Hey, there you go. Getting some overdue recognition. Boo. <laughs> Boo. Boo. <laughs> etc. etc. Boo's continued. I bet they're nervous too, though. Right. There is something to that experience. But they're both nervous. I feel like there's some things that just never go away. I think more important and more of a deciding factor than whether or not anyone is nervous is how well they've learned to play through the nervousness or perform despite the nervousness, which is partly why that visualization exercise Nishinoya and Tanaka did is so essential. Best of five. Okay, that partly explains the 10 episodes because I was wondering about that. Oh yeah, they don't have that. Ex but they did. They have been playing two games a day, right? So it ends up being roughly the same. But I suppose fewer breaks. Oh, this is going to be such a big game for Suki. He really riled them up, but I think maybe that was intentional in some part. First serve. Oh no! Going right to their hammer. I think I know where this is. What's going to happen here? Whoa, if he can't get it, if he can't, oh man, that's alarming. 
it would have been less alarming if it just went straight and hit the, the court, you know? The fact that he was right there, and it did nothing. <laughs> what a reaction. I expect nothing less. At least there's a clear target, I guess. In spirit of the show so far, especially season two, and the things they've experienced informing their, their games, I can see serves being really crucial to this game. The less chance Ushikawa has at the ball, the better chances they have, clearly. And new ending. I'm sure I'm gonna love, <laughs> love this theme by the end after it's over. What a roster in this show. This is huge cast. Massive. Saving the best for last year, maybe? Josai. Who I now love with all my heart. Stupid sexy Oikawa has just become sexy Oikawa. <laughs> here we are. Here we go. Here we go. The real stars. What are they all chasing? The, the cup? And not a lead in the pack. Cute. Simple ending, but awesome. This team has been set up so well as being just this unstoppable force full of 25-year-old ringers. I suspect I'm gonna like Ushikawa. He comes off as kind of cold at first, and he's less playful than Oikawa, but I, I have a feeling it's passion. And I, I think really his speech to Hinata and Kageyama in the beginning of season two was not so much of an insult as it was a challenge. He seems excited to be playing and wants to see what they can do. He's a weapon and couldn't have gotten that way without being extremely committed. And he's proven himself to be confident. And I think there's something about being great and confident and knowing who you are that makes you open to wanting other people to be great. I think that if you're really secure in what you can do and who you are in any given field or in anything really, you get excited by other people's greatness, not threatened by it. You don't want to take them down. You want to bring them up. Maybe partly because you know that's what you need. If you're just always the best and everything's easy for you, where's the growth? Where's the challenge? For reasons that I'm not fully clear on, I feel more confident about Karasuno's chances after watching this episode than I did going into this game or into the season. And I think a large part of that is their demeanor and the fact that they seem to have a, a strategy. They're not just going into this saying, okay, we're just going to play, right? They have identified the ways in which the team is better than them, things they can try. And if they lose, it's not going to be because of ignorance or lack of preparation or lack of heart. I'm confident they're going to bring their best and they're going to have their minds in the game, even in difficult moments. That gives them the best chance that they possibly could have.